All right. Hello there, and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. I was uh, deciding at the end there, I wanted to change my graphics uh, settings, and that's a great thing to do right before you hit go on a stream. That's okay. Uh, anyway, uh, last time on Plugin Along, we dug into why the Minstrel Buff plugin was not using the settings encoder class properly. And we went ahead and updated Minstrel Buff to use a more modern way of writing decimal numbers to save a file. Oh, Shortlist in chat says hello. Hello, Shortlist guys. So today, we're going to actually pause on Minstrel Buff to tackle a fun challenge. I was messaged the other day on Discord about the possibility of making a plugin that alerts the user when crowd control is broken. Uh, and I didn't think this was possible, but it turns out there's an option that has been off on my client for possibly the entire time I've been playing uh, that called display combat state break notices in chat window. So we're gonna take advantage of the fact that plugins can monitor the chat window for those messages. Uh, anyway, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions and away we go. I'm going to move a window around here and pull up my notes. All right, let's go ahead and make my notes visible. Okay, so the the initial request was pretty straightforward. Um, looking for something that pops up an alert with who broke crowd control. And maybe a window keeping track of which mobs crowd control was broken when by whom. Um, this wasn't meant to be like a, a blame and shame kind of thing so much as uh, if you're trying to work out the kinks in a complicated fight, these are the, uh, maybe the kind of notes that you can uh, uh, use to say, hey, this, is, this keeps happening. This specific mob is giving us problems. Let's see what we can do to control that mob. So what does that mean? Uh, first of all, crowd control in Lord of the Rings Online, similar to other MMOs, uh, different classes have the ability to control a target, um, either by a fear effect, causing them to run around uh, wildly, waving their hands in the air, or by trapping them, such as a hunter, uh, such as Rosenblum can do here. <laughs> um, sorry, Enchant. Uh, Snuggle says, blame the champ add-on, though. Has a certain ring to it. Yeah, we've been throwing around various names. Uh, uh, one, one of the people we, we run with who uh, who inadvertently breaks uh, uh, crowd control was, was offering that we could name it after them. And it's like, yeah, you know. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that the final name is a little bit more findable, but we'll see. <laughs> yes, as Little Redhead says, who shot the Mez? As Mez is a common, at least commonly used in Lotro circles, uh, word for crowd control as well. So we're going to run up the mountain path here, just outside Moria um, and Nand Ohirion, and find a mob. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate a couple of crowd controls to start. Um, to start, I'm going to go ahead and change the filter uh, in this chat window that I have set up to uh, involve combat event, because I believe that is where we are going to see this option. A little scattered here, sorry about that. If you search your combat option, uh, options for break, you'll see display combat state break notices in chat window. This plugin is going to depend on that notice showing up. So a thing we can be thinking in our head is, hey, maybe we should remind the user when they first load this plugin on any character, hey, by the way, display combat state break, you know, this setting needs to be turned on. And we can do that. We can, oops, hey, it's time to uh, go say hello. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, I won't be fearing that one. So um, we'll want, as a plugin, we can, we can write out a save file for each um, character that says we have told them about this, we don't need to tell them anymore. It's just a one-time nag screen, but this setting is per character, per server, per account. So uh, you do need to have it on on each of your characters that you're using this plugin on. <laughs> so I will suggest maybe if the plugin also displayed a little scoreboard. In the end, I bet my hunter would be on top. That's the, that's the spirit. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of fun reporting things you could think about, right? Like for now, we're just going to spit stuff out to, like for today's stream, we're just going to want to spit stuff out to probably the standard chat. In fact, let me go ahead and add standard and error to this window as well. Those are the two primary ways we're going to see output from our plugin. Uh, and for a minstrel, I have invocation of Elboreth, 
call upon the Valar, uh, or calling upon the Valar can send certain evil foes f fleeing in terror for a short time. And when they say certain, they mostly mean has a brain. It doesn't work very well on uh, crawlers and spiders. Um, but I do that. It runs around with its arms above its head like a Kermit. It's great. And for 15 seconds, oh no, Rosenblum has broken Moria Orc Warrior of their fear with an attack. Just a moment. Excuse me. So, this is a message that I didn't think was possible in game. Turns out you just have to ask for it. Uh, this message right here, Rosenblum has broken. And so this is a message that we can key off of. We can look at the combat event channel for these things. Now. In plugin terms, internally, uh, if we look at the chat types, there isn't actually a um, combat events type in the chat type uh, enumeration. There is a death channel, which is, I imagine, what this was originally for, was to announce that someone has succumbed to uh, morale. Um, and so if one of us were to die, that goes into combat events, but also, um, uh, crowd control breaking. And this is actually going to be really nice from a plugin performance perspective. Combat enemy and combat player have a bunch of messages during combat, but the combat event is relatively quiet, assuming you're not having a total party wipe. Eh, otherwise, it gets a little chatty. So uh, this is actually going to be very nice from a plugin perspective. We're only going to be looking at a few messages. The tricky part... Oh, hello. The tricky part is that each type of crowd control has its own messaging. So we can see, has broken the orc, Moria orc warrior of their fear with an attack. But if we go ahead and find another orc, and this time use the hunter's trapping ability. Well, I'm not even tracking minerals. What's going on here? Okay. Oh, good. Here's one up on the right. So if she goes ahead and puts down a trap, Well, I get this Khazad Skarn. Where'd you go? Oh, that one. That's a ranged one. All right. So we can see that it is trapped and... Really? There we go. That's interesting. Didn't get the message that time. I wonder if it was too busy being stunned. Let's try it again on this Mor uh, Moria Orc Warrior. I use tripwire. Oh, that is not breakable. Uh, they did, um, tripwire is a stun, and stuns don't get broken. So let's use this one, and then I'll go ahead and just uh, ping it with a dot, and we can see it is. Really? All right, you must not have a break a hundred percent on uh, damage. Let's find another one. Okay. So we'll be a little less aggressive. We'll just go up and beat on it. So let's go ahead and plant down that trap again. Not yet. How long is your cooldown? So this will be a, is a good example of how we're going to build in the capability to debug, to pretend like we've seen the message, um, so that we don't have to keep finding things to uh, defeat in landscape. Fifty percent break on damage. All right, we'll have to do lots of little damages. All right, so I'm just going to wander over here and get the Moria Orc Warrior's attention. Oh, no, it's been trapped. Excellent. So I'm just going to bash it with my frying pan. There we go. I have freed Moria Orc Warrior from a daze. Now, that's different. It's not uh, has broken. It has freed. So we're going to have to pay attention to a couple different types of messages. Each time we see an, a, a combat event message, we'll go ahead and... Oops. Uh, we'll go ahead and compare it against each one of the uh, condition breaks that we think exist. Okay. So that's the general idea. We're going to go ahead and... Well, I guess we could stand here and just defeat things if they come along. Um, but we're going to go ahead and open up a code window and get started with a new plugin with the goal of monitoring combat chat and knowing when these things happen. And along the way, maybe we'll come up with more, more things to do uh, eventually. Uh, so we'll also have a to-do file that's tracking our goals. All right. So, oh, there's not the same one I was looking for. All right, so we need a new development folder. 
Well, it's been a while since we've done this, but in Lord of the Rings Online plugin data, I'm oh, sorry, plugins, it is common to store all of your plugins as an author under a folder that indicates that. In, my, in this case, cube plugins, it's me. Um, and then underneath here, we have a folder for each plugin. You can also have a common folder where you store utility files, libraries, that kind of thing. Uh, I haven't done that. I'm a little bit scattershopped in my development style, so I haven't really consolidated and said, oh yes, let's let's have the same thing that I can use on multiple plugins. Um, there are better plugin authors than, than I who take advantage of that uh, availability. Oh, <coughs> oh interesting. Egg Arthur um, comments in chat that this may already be done. Um, let's take a look. He, uh, Egg Arthur says, if it's not already mentioned, I think the Alerter plugin by Garen does something similar to this. Well, that's exciting. I did some searching. I just typed into um, Google Lotro Crowd Control plugin. I didn't come up with anything. Um, so I kind of naively assumed, well, maybe that means there isn't one, uh, which, you know, is possible. So let's take a look at Alerter. It's a funny noise that my computer is making. Alert. OK. Lotro alerts. Let's take a look at it. Maybe this does exactly what I wanted. Oh, neat. All right. Well, that's cool. We may not need to do anything. All right. Ever get blown up while wandering in stealth just to realize you missed the tracking warning? Ever have some stray arrow break your stun day's mez on a critical NPC and not know who to rant at? Well, I love it. Let's take a look. This was last updated uh, six years ago. So we're going to go ahead and install it and see if it works uh, using the plugin compendium. <laughs> Snuggle says, let's add a scoreboard. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Based on the screenshots, what kind of reporting do we have on this? All right, so we're going to come in here. <laughs> I got this. Says, Actually, Garen gave me an update the other day. Well, that's awesome. Garen has a whole heap of plugins on here. Um, I specifically have enjoyed several of them. Let's see. What's Compass do? Neat. All right. <laughs> Something displays your heading. All right, so this one was called uh, Lotro Alerts. So we're going to go ahead and add a new plugin. Alert. Excellent. Let's go ahead and add. <laughs> I got this. Didn't mean to derail your stream. No, that's uh, that's not a problem. Now I might can decide to forge ahead just for the practice of doing it, um, but I might not. I might uh, go back and do something else. Uh, the one of the lovely things about the Lotro plugin community is, yeah, oftentimes you feel like, oh, this is a neat idea. It's not that no one's done it. It's just that you didn't discover it, right? Um, like when I searched in Lotro plugin crowd control, right? It's it's not there on the first screen, uh, which you know for a lot of people means it doesn't exist. Uh, let's see. If I had typed in mez, would that have uh, been no, Palantir's got something maybe. So, right, like there's there's nothing in the the text that's really um, coming out um, here. Let's do that. Mm, dun, 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 dun. So that that's sort of the problem is this thing is awesome, but you know it, I'm not able to find it. it it's uh, not great. So uh, we're gonna take a look at it in game and see how it goes. Um, because I'm curious, this is something uh, I might run with myself. All right, so first of all, we've added a new plugin. Remember to hit the green arrow button to refresh your list. Uh, Lo Lotro does not keep an eye on the plugins folder, uh, probably for performance reasons. All right, Alerter by Garen. Awesome. Let's do it. Now, like many plugins, oh, there were options. Let's, uh, let's see what the options are. Oops. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Cool. So, chat commands, what do we have? Chat, let it use plugins, load alerter, alerter setup. Okay, alerter setup. Whoa, that's neat. Okay, so language, English, alerts. 
This is much more complicated. Interesting. So what I'm seeing is that it is going to give you the ability to set up custom alerts. Is that what I'm seeing? Does it have examples? I hear combat going on in the background. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, so I'm curious what the input was. See, simple of alert setups. Great. I'll create alert for a basic stun break. All right, let's look. Okay, neat. So, this is a really excellent screenshot. If you're not familiar with, whoa. Flicker, there's a blast from the past. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Lua patterns, uh, pattern matching, oops. Just let me see the image. Um, then we're using parentheses and it looks like dot plus and then has free dot star from dot star using those parentheses to match specific patterns. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I look at this, what I see is an insanely customizable plugin. But what I'm not seeing is sort of a just load it and it, it just does its thing. So there might still be a niche for a plugin that just knows the patterns for, for crowd control and that's all it does. Because if you wanted to set this up and you wanted other people to have your, uh, your setup, um, you could probably send them your save file but um, that's uh, it feels like it'd be a little bit more complicated. Like if I wanted to, like my whole kin to have the exact same setup as me, that feels non-trivial in this case. So I, th I feel like there's still a home for a plugin that's just about crowd control and not the more general alerter. Uh, so derailment is probably not happening. Neat, okay. Um, really? But I don't want to do your cookies. I just want to see the image. That's fine. Okay, so, um, neat. But I think there's a really good example of how we are actually going to do the exact same thing. We are going to use those Lua patterns, um, pattern matching to grab out bits of the chat message to say who did what to whom. Let's see. Um, just catching up on chat. Snuggle says, nice. I saw Garen even updated the alt inventory for the first time since 2012 or so. As an altaholic, it's fabulous. Little Redhead also uses alt inventory and loves it. MacArthur says, I've been using it for reforge reminders. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because that's one of those things that just every five or ten levels or so you might forget about it. Although, I'm on a Treebeard server, so... Um, I reforged at 56 and then it'll be like four months before I can reforge again, no matter what I do. So that, that, uh, is kind of streamlined that. I got there. It says you can even use the alerter for your, uh, use your own Lua code for triggers or response customization. Interesting. Oh, for a response. No, oh, neat. And then custom Lua trigger code. That's fascinating. I didn't realize uh, you could execute arbitrary Lua plugin like that from a plugin. That's exciting. All right, I'm kind of curious about an example for that. Hang on. How do I use the response code snippet? Yes, tell me more. Fascinating. 
all right, I'm half tempted to dig into the code to figure out how it uh, executes arbitrary Lua that wasn't in the script file, but that's not... A, oh, okay, Agartha said using pcall. That's fair. Uh, I know that pcall exists, and mostly I know it exists in order to swallow exceptions that would otherwise kill the um, the, the, the plugin thread. Uh, but I didn't realize pcall could execute arbitrary strings as Lua code. That's excellent. Okay. Um... That's fun. Okay. Uh, I think I need to favorite this sucker. Add to my favorites. Neat. And I'll come back to that later. In fact, I'm going to rate that file. That's an excellent file. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, move out slash little redhead. Yes, a large list of plugins there. Okay, so I think. There is room in uh, the ecosystem for a plugin that just does uh, mes notifications, and there's no, not really any customization of it. Like maybe we can change the color that it flashes up on screen, but it, you just uh, uh, run it and done. Awesome! Thank you so much, Agatha, for letting me know that Alerter is here and that it could fit this need. Oh, interesting. Agatha says one last note: the trick of the code doesn't work without the recent update that Garen provided. Hmm. I wonder if that's related to the internal Lua engine update that seemed to happen about a year ago. Oh, you fight that thing. I'm gonna see about this Kazad scar. Oh, Sorry, I have a bit of a cough from some allergies going on here, so I'm gonna try to mute when I do that, but. Uh, that's what's going on. Okay, so, um, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and unload Alerter so that we can just focus on having one plugin at a time. And I'm gonna come back in and go through the process of starting a new plugin. I think it's a useful exercise just to remind myself what's happening. Um, and yeah, it, that's really nice to know that if this little tiny self-contained plugin just doesn't work for you, you can always bump up to the huge alerter version that lets you do endless customization. That's awesome. Okay, so in plugins, in cube plugins, we're gonna go ahead and make a new folder, and that's gonna be called something. Now, naming this is hard. I came up with crowd control breaker because I'm terrible at naming things, uh, but I wanted crowd control in the name because that's what I searched for. I searched for plugin crowd control, uh, and so I figured that would help people like me find this thing. And then maybe in the description, I'll even reference, hey, if this doesn't do it for you, check out this other one with Alerter, uh, because I think that one is really awesome. Okay, and next up, we need a .plugin file. I'm just gonna crib off of this one. And we're gonna call it uh, crowd control breaker dot plugin, and we're going to start modifying it to uh, to our needs. <laughs> I broke crowd control. Yeah, that's probably going to happen. All right, we'll go ahead and bump that version down to a introductory stuff. Welcome to crowd control breaker. Ah, Alerter Redhead's doing name suggestions. Who broke crowd control? Hmm, maybe crowd control broke. <laughs> that might be a little bit more uh, more accurate. I, I like that. I will take your past tense. We've been working uh, our way through imperfect and perfect past tenses in Dutch class, and it is non-intuitive for an English speaker, or for this English speaker. All right. I'm just gonna modify this message a bit. You can join. I keep looking at this server at that. 
to report any uh, to report any. We'll go with bugs, bugs, feature requests, etc. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove a bunch of this and that, and this fucking car control broke. This plugin shows you who bro broke crowd control. Uh, well, we'll come back and fix that later. Now, we have a configuration apartment here. I don't think we actually need that for a shipped version. It, I guess, could be useful during development. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just remove that right now. We, we probably don't need it. Um, for an image, um, I kind of want to steal that uh, warning thing from Alerter, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and not have an image right now. All right. So package, cube plugins. We're going to go ahead and change that to crowd control broke. And we're good. We have a dot plugin file, and we also need the corresponding main.lua file that we just told it. Uh, that we're going to be uh, doing. So we're going to go ahead and save this as crowd control broke main.lua. Now for consistency sake, am I starting these with capital letters? I am starting these with capital letters. All right. So uh, crowd control broke capital M main.lua. There we go. So if I do a uh, refresh with the green arrow, we see we have crowd control broke 1.0, no image. We have our description here and we can hit load. Loading is trivial at this point because there's nothing in there, uh, but it does load. And so that is a uh, complete reproducible tiny plugin. I see there's exciting stuff happening. Thanks, Hunter. All right, you have my murder machine. Okay, so what do we need here? What do we have? Um, we have messages in the combat events. So we need chat monitoring. Okay. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and make a to do file. Uh, and we could even preemptively create a readme.txt uh, file. I don't think there's anything that's going in there right now, but. Uh, I should say, thanks to Carl for the idea of a small self-contained plugin to alert on crowd control breaking. Cool. Uh, version 1.0.0. And then we have a place to put features later. All right, in our to-do file. Uh, well, let's pull up that sort of designed, kind of a design document that I uh, cribbed from our conversation about what this would look like. Let's see, we'll move that over there so my face doesn't cover half of it. And we'll move this over here. Ignore the Lotro in the background, it's not doing anything. Okay, so uh, we want to um, monitor combat event channel for crowd control breaking messages. Simple enough. Um, sample messages. Uh, Krell was kind enough to grab some of them, and I think I grabbed a few myself since uh, Minstrel and Hunter are both readily available for me over here on Treebeard. Okay. Um, they, in fact, saw this when an NPC broke crowd control in, I believe they said they were in the Further Ventures of Bilbo um, Mission 4 or so. Uh, so the Longbeard Warrior, oh yes, um, when you're talking to Glowian, I think. Um, cool, so we have some text, has freed from days. <coughs> oh, this is just a repeat. Don't need that. All right, uh, what it looks like if you do it, you have freed from a days. Awesome. Um, what else? There we go. Fear has broken a fear attack. All right, any others? So uh, ideally, we're gonna set this up so we can add more messages as more crowd control types kind of come in. But right now we have days and fear. Uh, and we've seen in a couple instances where stuns don't get broken, such as the tripwire ability from a hunter. And I believe Krell was trying on a burglar and their stuns just 
you know, never produce this message. So not every crowd control is breakable. So that's a, a good starting point. Is this is um, because not all crowd control is breakable. We don't need to care about all crowd control, just the ones that uh, we know can be broken. Okay. Another thing uh, was we want to tell the user. I should say remind the user to turn on the. Um, now what do we call it? What do we call that? Display combat state break. And that's all in lowercase, isn't it? Combat state break notices in chat window. Um, and we only want to do that once. Like, it might, it's a problem, uh, I, I suspect, but have not tested that that toggle might be part of your UI profile. So if you save and load UI profiles, that might get turned off, even if you previously had turned it on. I need to test that. In fact, test, does this setting change when you slash UI layout load uh, name? If so, We'll want, there's nothing we can do about that. I believe a plugin cannot know that a UI profile has been loaded, but we can at least remind them uh, in that uh, uh, one-time notice, by the way, this is um, per profile. I don't know how to, to say that gracefully in a way that won't like confuse people who've never tried a UI profile, but I'm hoping the overlap of people who use this plugin and know about UI profiles is non-zero. Uh, well, that's a problem for later. I'm just putting this in the, what am I going to do to, uh, in the near future? Okay. Um, notifications. So today, specifically, um, output to standard, the three pieces. What, um, who, what, who broke, uh, which... Um, crowd control on what or something. What was there? Such a name type mob. Great. Uh, so the three W's are what we want to be able to produce arbitrarily. For now, well, I'll put that to standard chat. If we can do it to standard chat, we can put it into a window whenever we want to. Okay. Later. A UI window with a clear button or start and stop. Uh, cool. Okay. So let's talk about chat monitoring. That's the first thing. Now, chat monitoring, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this design document here. Uh, chat monitoring, we can do that with chat. Um, the chat received event fires when a chat message is received. Neat. Uh, I'm glad that chat received. That's what that does. And then using the uh, arguments, we can tell which channel this is meant for. Now, we could try to uh, deduce this for ourselves, but my favorite technique of writing code is to steal code from a different thing that works. Stealing is, of course, a, uh, a euphemism here. Uh, I'm going to go look at a different plugin that I've done, and I'll look at the chat logger and see what of this we need. All right, so we have a function called initiate chat logger. Awesome, let's start with that. In fact, let me go ahead and pull this off, put it over here, and we'll use that to guide our development of this simpler thing. So we're in main right here. One of the things that um, I do, and I don't know if this is a good idea, but I see it a lot in other plugins, is in my main file, I put all of my import statements. And I worry about that. Uh, because it means that if I just look at the chat logger .lua, this does not work unless you have previously imported main, right? It does not import its own uh, requirements. And coming from a C++ background, that feels very strange to me. Uh, it feels like all of your stuff should be imported here, and if there's multiple imports, uh, it'll just sort out to only do one of them. Lua probably supports this. Uh, it's something I should dig into more. Uh, but that's that's a thought that I have. So uh, in the main.lua, 
we're going to want to go ahead and import stuff. Now, right now, uh, let's see. We're going to go ahead and import cube plugins dot crowd control breaker. Oh, broke dot. And here's where we have um, chat logger or chat. I'll just call it chat for now, make it nice and simple. But it does remind me that that dot plugin file needs to be changed. So crowd control broke. All right, um, so we are going to go ahead and make that chat file. And in chat, we can now do stuff. Now, Turbine is going to have our uh, chat object that we're hooking onto. So we do want to import that. And then we can go ahead and have our own function initiate chat uh, monitoring. That uh, logger is probably not a great way to describe it because I'm not logging things, I'm just uh, monitoring it. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to fix that in this plugin. Okay, so we have the turbine.chat and we're gonna go ahead and set the received function to be something. Now it can be an anonymous function just like this it can actually be a named function. So if I did turbine.chat.received equals, well, I could actually just have a function. Um, handle all chat. And this could take sender uh, and args. And I can go ahead and uh, set that to be handle all chat. There we go. So you don't have to do anonymous functions. And if your anonymous function gets to be the size of this, where it's filling up my entire page here, it might be time to promote it to not be an anonymous function. Just a moment. Oh, oh yes, okay. I seeing flashing outside the window as if there's like an emergency services vehicle, but it's just the uh, paper recycling truck just sitting there outside my window. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty normal here. We'll just you know advance uh, 20 meters and then throw a bunch more stuff in from, from everyone who puts stuff out and then advance. Uh, and that works really well here because we're in medium density housing where there's, there's a bunch of homes uh, within walking distance for, for them to, to load up. All right, so handle all chat. And then we might even delegate further to say function handle combat event chat. And at that point, we might need both sender and args. We might not uh, need any of that. We might need just message. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, well, args is gonna come in and we're gonna get a message and we're also gonna get chat type. So local chat type equals args.chat type. You could go ahead and name it like this. No harm to that. Or we can just use chat type by itself. So if args.chat type equals something. Well, what are our options? Our options are in the chat type enumeration. And specifically, we know, or at least we know from previous experience, that in the, uh, in the enumeration, the death channel corresponds to combat events. So more than just player death goes there now. Okay. So we want that to be turbine dot chat type dot death. Neat. Okay. So if it's equal to that, then we're going to do something. Uh, otherwise, probably nothing, right? So we can actually just pass that off. Handle combat chat and then it's args dot message. Now, this is a very minimalistic sort of way of, of coding where you just have a function that just does a thing and then uh, it doesn't grow to uh, an unmanageable length. Uh, you can take it to uh, too much extreme. But uh, I think here we're gonna end. We're just gonna handle that event chat. Cool. So we need, oh, sorry. Uh, we need to go ahead and start comparing that message uh, 
to some of the ones that we're looking for. But first of all, let's just go ahead and say turbine.shell.writeline um, saw a combat event message. And we're going to go ahead and append that, and that'll be good. So the last thing we need is to initiate that chat monitoring, and then we can do that here from the main. Now, it might be nicer to have a little function that we call. So we could actually have function main end and leave that in, in here. And then <coughs> the only statement in our main function, sorry, our main file would be to call this function. And that keeps the number of top level statements kind of down to a minimum. We have function declarations, sure, but the actual main file just has one thing it does, which is to call this function. Okay, let's go ahead and go back into the game and load that up, or try to anyway. Excellent, it is loaded. So we're gonna go ahead and seek out this Moria Orc Warrior. I'm gonna go ahead and fear it with the invocation of Elbreth. Neat. Excellent. Well, good news. Most of that worked, except, of course, I misspelled right line in my haste. Right line is, of course, spelled in camel case with a W and L capitalized. So we did try to write that out when we saw your attack has broken. That tried to write out. That's very promising. All right. Uh, anyone else in here? Oh, here's a skirmisher. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and fear them. Place a dot on them, just our damage over time. See if that breaks. Realize that we forgot to reload our plugin, so we're still getting the exact same error message. Uh, excellent. If we stop shooting it, it'll be fine. We can uh, do it again in 12 seconds. Here, let's go ahead and shield you. Heal myself. Shield me. Great. Have a drink of water. As I said, once we get the chat stuff uh, working, we can uh, isolate it and have a button that just pretends like we saw this message. Okay, so they are running away. My swords are stabbing them. I was really thinking that was going to be enough. There we go. Saw a combat event message. Your attack has broken Moria Orc Skirmisher of their fear. Awesome. So, uh, we have an end-to-end -end, uh, working minimal model here. We have a main function that initiates that chat monitoring, and in chat monitoring, we have a callback function that is able to discriminate based on the channel type, and then finally, we can do something with that message. Great, chat monitoring complete. We're not doing much with it yet, but first one's first. So. <coughs> Um, done. So next is um, parse combat event messages based on uh, collected patterns. Okay, now we can actually do two metaphorical birds with one stone here. Uh, the messages that we're looking for are of course going to be different in French and German, any uh, different client language. So we're going to want to support uh, localization. And we can do that right out of the box. We'll take some inspiration from some other plugins. In fact, that one's a little bit complicated for this purpose. Let's knock it back down to the opaque quest tracker. Okay, so we have a lang table and we have a helper function get string based on the key that you're talking about. So in this case, lang.status.loaded, and that function will return the uh, current language if it's available or otherwise English. This plugin is not gonna work uh, if you don't have your language localized. It's purely based on uh, chat parsing, but it, it won't crash or anything, so that's good. So let's go ahead and add in a strings.lua. And in this strings.lua, we're gonna do a similar thing we're going to go ahead and make sure we have access to the turbine package. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and save off some uh, handy dandy references to these enumerations of English, German, and French. Now, what are these? These are defined in the language enumeration. And specifically, English, French, and German are the three client languages we're most concerned with. I think it's funny that they call out British English given that the game attempts to uh, be in British English uh, with their spelling and uh, uh, word uses. But uh, maybe once upon a time this was, uh, this was a useful thing to have in there. Oh, I think I, my current water has run out. I'll just grab this one from over here. Neat. Okay, so um, we have uh, just declared some shortcuts that makes it a little bit easier to use these as the uh, keys to our table. Um, we do want to know what the language uh, of the client is. Awesome. Uh, this, uh, the other reason why we need import turbine, we're going to use turbine.engine get language. And we have turbine language English. Oh, thank you. The water delivery is here. Neat. Okay, so we're going to declare a table, lang equals done. Remember to use semicolons liberally in these tables, otherwise the Lua gets uh, cranky. And we're going to go ahead and start declaring, um, what is this going to look like? We're going to uh, have a section called chat, and that's going to be its own table. And then I guess we just uh, start using the list of ideas Oh, where did that go? Aha. Uh -huh. So we had uh, some messages. Did those make it into the to do file? They did. Excellent. That's why I showed that out of the way. Okay. So uh, we want to be able to just iterate through this table. And we can do that using, I think, the pair function. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start defining things here. And I'm uh, sort of constructing this in my head on the fly. So this might not be the, the right thing in the end, but it'll get us there. So days, days self equals, and that's going to be you know, uh, English equals something. And we can go ahead and uh, use those samples in a bit. We also have days of, uh, other, and this is who's doing the breaking. Uh, in fact, we can uh, document that. Um, crowd uh, control type underscore who did the breaking. Because in English, at least, the grammar changes. We have Longbeard Warrior has freed, you have freed. So we're going to want to pay attention to that. And thus, we don't need to. We might be looking for just freed. But I think I think it'll be better to go ahead and, and have some regular expressions with these grammatical changes because that allows us to more easily isolate who's doing it. If you see something has freed versus something have freed, that'll uh, I think that's useful. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll revisit that later. Okay, so days other equals, and again, just defining, uh, we're gonna have an English entry here, and remember those semicolons. All right, uh, days, uh, and as an example of days, we're gonna go ahead and bring these in. All right, so that is self, that is other. Great. Uh, what else? Fear. We have. That's this is an other. Uh, but we'll also want to get one for ourselves. Now, do we still? Yes. Excellent. Now I'm copying the time codes in here. That's actually not uh, something that we see, nor is that useful. So I'm going to remove it from these sample messages. 
Okay, so same thing. We're going to go ahead and define uh, fear self as a table with a default uh, English value. And we're going to go ahead and do, thank you, Hunter, fear other equals stuff. Cool. Okay, those are the two I know about so far. But this is the pattern we would follow if we needed to throw in something. If there was a stun that was breakable, or if there was some other effect, like a scared effect that's different from fear effect, you know, that kind of thing. So this doesn't have to be complete right now. We will just add another section with examples and translations uh, whenever we need it. Okay. So... What is the pattern going to look like? Well, we have you have freed, uh, and that is, I'm wondering if I want to capture you anyway, just so it's always three things, who did it? Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. I wonder if you can just capture text like that. That would be silly. We're gonna go ahead and do it with a, a dot star for right now. All right, you have freed something from a day's exclamation point. Awesome. I'm hoping that's not a trailing new line character that I have to deal with. We'll come back to that. All right, and we have something else. Has freed um, something, something from a day's. Neat. All right, fear. Um, your attack has broken. Interesting. Well, we'll go ahead and do the same thing, actually. Um, has broken, dot star. Now, we're seeing a lot of, of their fear. We're seeing a lot of duplication here in some of these patterns. And maybe that means we can simplify this down the road. Uh, for now, I think this is a fine uh, starting point. Has broken someone's of their fear with an attack. Interesting. Now, I'm noticing that we're, if we want to be generic and just iterate through this until we find something, it might be useful to go ahead and capture from a, and capture days here from a days of their fear. Just because we can then just use um, captured one, two, and three regardless, and that's the three things we care about. Now I think it's interesting that this one calls out specifically that um, broke the fear with an attack versus your attack has broken. I mean, it's the same concept. Oh, Thorlor says, hello. Hello, Thorlor. If you are just joining us, we are making a streamlined version of an alerter plugin that is just targeted towards crowd control uh, using the options in the combat for display combat state break notices in chat window. Now you did say yellow. Now, are you intending the J to be pronounced hard or more like a Y? Because coming out of a Dutch class as I did today, I would read that as yellow. Okay, so we have some basic chat messages uh, to, to look for. And now we can go ahead and go back to our chat parser and iterate through that table. Now. I do not do Lua as my day job, and I forget how to do these things. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Lua um, pair table and look at an example of that. Is it just pairs? Well, that's interesting. This is doing more complicated stuff. I just want to know. <laughs> Isa 
Oh, Thurlow says, just like the dessert. All right. Issa says, having trouble keeping up since we've been cannibalizing other code. I do apologize. If I go a little fast, feel free to throw something into chat. Um, I don't mind uh, kind of uh, circling back around and talking about what's going on. Um, let me know, uh, what, wh wh where are you starting from? Do you do coding? Do you, um, have you done plugins in other systems? Like what, what's, uh, what kind of level are we talking about? Also, Issa says, where do I get that turbine documentation or any other relevant documents? Excellent. Um, now, a thing I would recommend is not necessarily to watch every episode. There's a lot of uh, meandering that goes on here. But if you uh, want to kind of get bootstrapped, the first four or so streams that I did um, were, let me just click on this folder here. Let's see. Yeah. Um, the basic, uh, the basics here, I did some uh, blog posts at Life Beyond the Shire. Uh, and I could go ahead and paste that into the chat here. And one of the things that probably uh, I mentioned was you can see a Lua reference manual at this link. Um, and you can download the documentation for the Lotro Lua from Lotro Interface. And it's called Official Update 25 Lua Documentation. Thurlor's calling that out into chat as well. So the official uh, documentation as it is, uh, I'll throw that into chat here, but there's a version of this uh, documentation. You can download this locally. These um, HTML pages are all local, but there's also a version of this hosted at the Lotro interface uh, site under lotrointerface.com slash wiki slash lotrointerface underscore wiki of course, and there, there's also an API reference, and they are not quite identical. And I find this one's really useful, for instance, if I want to see what options are available. Uh-oh. Um, if I want to see the options available and say the color enumeration, this version of the documentation gives a lot of default colors. I don't know if it's a complete list, but it's a lovely list. If you can't find the color you're looking for here, you might be a little picky. Uh, whereas the color enumeration information in the downloadable package doesn't list those, to my knowledge, anywhere. Um, hello, Lunar Water. Welcome to chat. Um, so, uh, that would be a thing. If, you, if you're looking for some of those basics, how do I jump into plugins? Uh, look, you can look at the first four streams that I did, which were really focused on that, that basic, let's get started, let's make a, a dot .plugin file, let's make a main file. Uh, where do I get my links? Or where do I get my uh, language reference files? Where do I get my API files? That kind of thing. What, a, what do errors look like? What, a, what am I going to see? Uh, all, all of those things. So I would recommend starting there if you feel like uh, this is moving a little bit too fast. Uh, that being said, feel free to jump into chat with specific questions and I'm happy to um, circle back around to them. And we also have a couple other plugin developers here in chat right now who uh, might also have uh, thoughts and opinions, uh, sometimes very different from my own, I'm, I'm sure. We are not a monolith. That being said, Thurlor answered my question uh, because I am terrible at Lewis syntax sometimes. Uh, my day job is C-sharp, and I just have so much uh, bracketed language background that, or brace language background that. Uh, all right, so for key value in pairs, uh, table is what Thurlor put. Now, table, of course, in this case, is a shortcut for lang chat. So lang.chat do and neat. So that's going to step through. Now, Thurlow pointed out that there is, um, if the keys are integers and you want to do them order, in order, you can do I pairs. In this case, the keys are just um, a visual thing for us. We don't actually care about it. It might be useful in a debug sense. Uh, or we could use that as an index into another table to get, I don't know, something. Um, but for now, I don't actually care about the key, just the value. And uh, we can actually just go ahead and say, 
let's write a sample uh, little snippet here in the initial function. So it's only going to get called once. And we'll just do a quick little turbine.shell.writeline. You know, that's going to get a little old typing that each time. So let's go ahead and borrow another function. <laughs> We're going to borrow once or, once or twice. We're going to come in here to general functions, debug. Awesome. Now we're gonna lift a couple of uh, helper functions. So, make a new file, general functions.lua. So, these are two useful functions and we're gonna need that uh, import for turbine in order for this file to work. So, we don't actually have a verbose output right now so I'm going to go ahead and pretend like that's not there. That's a setting that, uh, specific to dtracker. It might be useful here as well. So debug takes a message and color codes it one way. Info takes a message and color codes it another way. From the dtracker plugin that I just lifted this from, there's also a setting that will squelch debug messages unless there's a specific checkbox in the options that has been checked. Then you'll see them. Otherwise. Uh, this function is called and it just does nothing. So that's a, a handy way to see only important stuff for most users and then you get to see more stuff later on. So now that I have this, I need to remember to include it. So we're going to import q plugins dot have and broke general functions. Excellent. We're also going to want those string files. Now, this is one of those things where I wonder if it would be a little bit cleaner if my, um, let's see, if my chat included the general functions and included the strings to call out the explicit dependencies of this file. I'm gonna play around with that in this plugin. Uh, it's very different from what I've done in other places, and there may be a very good reason not to do this that I will stumble across in about 20 minutes and go, oh, that's why. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna tr give it a try. So we're just gonna go ahead and debug uh, the value. It's <laughs> circling back around. We're iterating through the table. We just want to see those values come out. So if I switch back to the game here, which is still miraculously running in the background, we're gonna go ahead and load. Nope, that didn't work. All right, so general functions is trying to concatenate a value that is a table value. Oh, of course. Um, a thing I forgot while we're lifting stuff, we have a table that will have English entries, it'll have French entries, equals uh, that, it'll have German entries. Um, we need a function that gets the appropriate one. Now, this is a pretty standard function that I, I more or less lift from uh, one place to another, but I can walk through it a little bit just uh, for you following at home. It's called get string, and you pass in a thing. So, example, get string lang dot uh, chat dot days self. And this is the key, and then we're going to use that. Um, and we're going to base it off the client language value. Uh, so first of all, if it was nil, then that's no good. But otherwise, we're going to assume it's a table value and run with it. We're going to go ahead and, and use the client language and see if that's there. And if not, uh, if it is, we'll use it. And if it's not, then we'll use the English value. Since I am an English uh, language speaking developer, I feel comfortable knowing that if any of the languages is there, English is there because I put it there. Now, that's not always true. We definitely have some French uh, primary language uh, developers on Lotro interface. Um, you know, we, we have developers of, of all languages, but this is a safe bet for a plugin that I am doing. Okay, so we can now um, go ahead and debug if we get a string from that value. Now, um, so local specific language equals get string from that value, and we can go ahead and launch to debug the specific value here. 
That's exciting. That'll teach me to hang out in the uh, wilds of Lothlorien. Okay, so let's try that again. Awesome. So, <laughs> the redhead says, get string sounds like something cat related. Absolutely. Excellent ASCII art there. Um, so it is a common parlance for computer programmers, software engineers, English speaking ones anyway, to consider a uh, clump of characters a string. I'm not sure where that started. It's, it's ingrained in my head. Uh, so to think of a, a group of characters uh, together as a string. Um, I don't know why, but I've been doing it for like 20 years, so here we are. Probably more than that, actually. Uh, all right, so we can see, we can iterate through that table and we can get those uh, uh, values. That is perfect. Now we can go ahead and use them. So instead of being here, we're gonna, oops. We're gonna go ahead and restore that initial chat monitoring. And here we have in the handle event, we know we have a combat event. We want to see if it matches. So we have, um, we're gonna actually rename this. Specific language was just what it is, but it's actually a crowd control break pattern. Awesome. And now we can still use that. We can still say checking um, that crowd control big pattern, uh, that'll be useful for a little while. And in fact, we're gonna go ahead and add some ticks surrounding it. And cool, so now pattern matching in Lua is another one of my many weaknesses in Lua, but we have an example from another plugin that already does it. And that's gonna be very handy. So. Here we can see this plugin is also getting a pattern from a get string call, and then it's calling a string dot match. Awesome, let's do it. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, so in this for loop, we have um, local. Um, what are we? What are we getting? Uh, we actually called this out earlier. We're getting a who, which, and what. Sure who, which, what, equals, and this is because uh, Lua function can return multiple values. So string.match, and we're doing the message and the crowd control breaking pattern. Now that's actually a really long name. Uh, I'd be tempted to simplify that down to current pattern, but I, it's fine. In fact, maybe I'll make it more complicated. Current crowd control break pattern. Hmm. There we go. Even even better, even more verbose. <coughs> All right. So we have called a string dot match. If there is a match, it'll return the capture groups. And if there's not a match, <laughs> Thurlor is, uh, I think, suggesting just pattern. And that's fine, right? Um, you, you know, we, we get to name things as complicated or as simply as possible. Uh, but that's the last time I'm going to be looking at that, so I am I am not worried about it here. So if these are not null, if who is not equal null, a nil I should say, then we can do stuff. But it might be nice to know that all of them are not nil. Uh, if at least one of them isn't, then that meant there was a pattern match, in which case all of them should not be nil. Um, they could be empty, I suppose, but they shouldn't be nil. So I, I think it's kind of optional if I check them all for null. I'm not going to right now. We'll see how much total I get into for that. Okay, so if that's not null, then function handle broken crowd control. Do a thing. Who, which, what. All right. And we're just gonna pass off responsibility. Handle broken crowd control, who, which, what. There you go, there's my uh, streamlined variable name is Thurlor. Okay, so in this function, we can assume that who, which, what are not nil. Let's go ahead and test that assumption though. Debug, um, who, 
a witch, and what? Great. And that's all we want to do right now. Let's go ahead and reload the plugin. This is very important. Uh, no syntax errors on loading. And let's go ahead and do an invocation of Elbereth. And then I'll try to break that sucker. Awesome. So, reviewing the chat log there as I failed to actually finish off that orc, um, we have uh, your attack has broken Moria Orc Warrior of their fear. And fun thing is plugins get the chat message just before it actually gets into the chat window. And so messages that from your plugin based on uh, those uh, chat messages coming in will predate it in the chat log, which is a little like a, a, a time travel. So we have your attack is broken, and so we can see checking, checking, checking. Who? Your attack. Which? Moria or Courier. What? Fear. Perfect. Uh, now, we can actually test that one more way. Uh, I'll go ahead and fear this Moria Orc Warrior, and then after one second, my hunter will come along and slowly defeat the Orc Warrior. And that'll give us, I know, it's a challenge. All right, so go ahead and just auto-attack it, maybe. Oh, it just ran back there. Get it, get it, get it! There we go. Okay, so who? Rosenblum, Witch, Moria, or Courier, what? Fear with an attack. Excellent question. Uh, 2418 asks, can you make it show what attack you use to break the attack? Um, so if it's you, then we could try to do correlation. Um, but what we're seeing is going into the combat event log, uh, and in general, probably for performance reasons, Lotro doesn't show you other people's attacks. It only shows you yours. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, you meant the crowd control. Lotro doesn't show you, so if I make a, a, create a new tab here and I just call it uh, combat, and I go ahead and change the filters to be combat, there's enemy and then there's player. So if I say combat player, uh, we're going to go ahead and rename that. Combat player. Do I have room for another one? No, that's okay. Um, let's see. Is there an orc nearby? Oh, there's a scar nearby. All right, this, this is an advantage of not doing this from a rooftop in Bree. Um, get actual progress on my name. All right, I'm being told that orc have frequent this area. Um, so, uh, a problem is that you'll see your combat specific messages, messages uh, of your outgoing stuff and messages for incoming stuff to you. Um, probably for performance reasons, you don't see everyone's combat messages. Uh, uh, there are some design decisions in Lord of the Rings Online that go back 15 years, and just recently, they ripped out some code that was specifically targeting throttling bandwidth for dial-up users. Now, a non-zero number of their users might still be dial-up, but it's got to be really small now. And 15 years ago, you could reasonably expect a healthy portion of your users to still be using some form of dial-up or low bandwidth uh, system. So, um, yeah, uh, Buddha says, yeah, it doesn't list the fellowship attacks in the combat log, so it wouldn't show the attack. So you could attempt to monitor the, the combat player log, and if you're the one who broke it, it could try to tell you what uh, attack it was. But in my experience, a lot of people, I don't have a lot of experience. In my experience with people I play with, which attack it was isn't really the question. Like, you'll, you'll hear like, ah, crap, I shot the orc. Like, right, you know it happened. Um, the, the key to this plugin is telling people it happened right away. As soon as, as, soon as the game knows it happens, you know, know it happened. Um, and for diagnostics afterward, so you can be like, okay, I, I, we only had seven hunter breaks this time instead of 14 last time. We're making progress, hunters, awesome. <laughs> Oh, neat. A little rapid points out that hunters can do a stun with dazing blow 
Um, so you get that, and then sometimes you get tripwire as well. So those are both ways we can test. Oh, hey. Um, what were we going to do with this orc? I don't know, but my mouse is... Yeah, sure. Well, you can't break daisies. Can you? Interesting. Oh, interesting. So the defeat messages um, are also getting checked. It might be useful to do an exception. To stop checking if defeated is in there. It might not. We don't have a lot of messages to check. But, but checking for regular expression messages uh, for every time you defeat a mob, that seems like a lot. Interesting. All right. Um, oh, yes. Thurlor is pointing out, and I meant to do this, that once you have found the thing, you don't need to keep looping through the keys. Uh, so you can very much do a uh, break here. Or at least I assume that's how uh, Lua uh, does that syntax. So you don't need to keep checking. Uh, we're not going to find another match. They're all distinct. Okay, that's an improved dazing blow. 100% break chance on damage after one second. Neat. All right, we should we should try that out. Uh, next time. Oh, hey, there's an arc. Follow me, hunter. Uh, once you've done the dazing blow, if you can back up, I will try to break it. Oh, uh, before we start, let me go ahead and just refresh to get that change I made. Great. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, I have freed Moria Orc Warrior from a daze, and who? You, which, Mork Warrior, um, and then what daze? Great. Okay, it's a daze, not a stun. Perfect, my mental model of the world has not collapsed. And more importantly, it worked. The plugin did stuff. So we could actually stop looking at debug, or we could do a little bit one up, a uh, little better. Let's go ahead and make a new file called settings.lua. It's not going to be much right now, but we're going to go ahead and in our general functions, we're going to go ahead and import it. Settings. And we're gonna go ahead and have a thing. So local, well no, ver verbose output equals, and for now, we're just gonna call that false. Cool, and then debug will go ahead and squelch messages. Hmm. Thurler says, any day your mental model of the world doesn't collapse is a good day. Absolutely. Like, that's a win in my book. Okay. Um, so we have the verbose output. It's currently false. Neat. Oops. So I don't know why I keep closing my plugin manager. I'm going to keep on opening it back up. All right. And so currently, debug messages should be squelched. And so this will not come out. But this, I want that to be an info, actually. There we go. So what do we have from this? Oh, Buddha says, if you used an actual text skill instead of auto attack, would it show that skill you used? I don't think uh, this message, you have freed the warrior from a daze. Um, I don't think that message is changing based on what attack I'm doing. Because I, I've, here, let's, uh, let's actually pause a sec. That's okay. So, very good. We can see that Rosenbloom, nice and green now because it's an info message. Rosenbloom, uh, the Mark Aurea skirmisher, broke the fear. But the actual message that we're triggering on has broken with an attack. So the game doesn't seem to be distinguishing, and that's fine for me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
that's fine for me. Uh, this is this is sort of a proof of concept here. We could eventually get tricky, and if you're the one involved in the attack, we could try to correlate. But a problem is that because we're keying off of chat messages, we don't get a unique ID for the thing that just got defeated. Oh, my hunter is so far away. I'm coming, hunter. We don't get a, an ID. It's not orc number 72. It's just orc. And so if you have an event, um, a, a battle, where you have 17 identically named mobs, like Moria Grunt, you know, a whole horde of Moria Grunts comes out, um, then you're probably going to see a lot of attacks against Moria Grunts in your combat log. And that's a little bit trickier, right? Like there's nothing to distinguish which Moria Grunt you're talking about. Wood asks, so you couldn't use your combat log to show what skill it was? You could show, you could track in the combat log to see what attacks were made against Moria Grunt, but there's no telling if that's the same Moria Grunt. If you have this Moria Grunt crowd controlled over in the corner, and then you have you know 15 more Moria Grunts and you're attacking them, it's going to look like you're attacking the, the Mezd Moria Grunt. Uh, there's no way from chat messages to distinguish which Moria uh, Grunt we're talking about. Does that make sense? Now, if you were in a, an event where there were named bosses that were not immune to uh, crowd control techniques, because a lot of, that's, that's my, my mental model of the game, is that if it's, if it's a named boss, it's probably got that little circle thing that says it's immune to crowd control anyway. So they're not in play. It's, it's the, the other things. And presumably, if you're playing at a high enough level, those other things might have distinct names too. Buddha asks, but the system knows when a certain mob is crowd controlled, does not. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things about plugins is you're working within a sandbox. You're working with it in a constrained environment that is controlled by and mediated by the Lotro client. So if the Lotro client doesn't provide a way for you to find out this information, then uh, you don't have the information without clever stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, so, for instance, uh, I made a plugin called Deed Tracker, which, uh, let me just load it up here a second, will track when you complete deeds. So, uh, oh, stop. Um, so, for instance, uh, let's see, are we in debug mode? Great. If it saw the Barrow Downs come through in the uh, quest channel completed colon the Barrow Downs. It would be like, hey, you probably just completed a deed called the Barrow Downs. I'm gonna I'm gonna mark that off. And so there's no uh, Lua API to get deed status to know what deed it is. Uh, Buddha asks, is there the tracker in the compendium? Absolutely, it is. Um, did I close my plugin compendium? That's so sad. I use it every stream. Plugin Compendium uh, by the by, by Lunar Water is amazing. I love it. And one thing is that it's going to hide anything that's currently installed. So you can see Deed Tracker 1 through 3 is installed author before it's me. Uh, and so this was a personal project of mine. It was like, you know, can it even be done? And when I saw the uh, Headbold uh, Builder plugin by, oh, did I do it again? I did it again. Oh my goodness. It's, it's my natural instinct to clean up after myself. So Hitbull system, ah, Galahad. Um, so the Hitbull system by Galahad was a really neat, uh, and you'll, you'll see its fingerprints all over this plugin if, if you go compare the two of them. Uh, but it was one of those things where I saw that as a visual way to represent deed trees and I wanted two things. I wanted it automatically track what she's uh, had completed because this was fresh off of Bombadil, the uh, um, the deed completion server with a, a side of PVP. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm tired of spreadsheets. I'm tired of tracking this stuff manually. I just want a plugin that does it for me and, and queue like 8,000 hours later of work or something. And it's like, yay, it works. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it is purely based on chat monitoring where it says, oh, you got a message saying completed, blah, blah, blah. 
let's see, is it in our list of deeds? And 90% of the time it's a quest, right? And a side effect of some of the internals of how Lord of the Rings works is that there is no deed chat channel, there is quest, because internally deeds are kind of a special kind of quest or quest or a special kind of deed. Like they're internally, there's, there's a lot of um, overlap. And so everything related to quests and deeds just goes into the same uh, chat channel. And one of the side effects that you, uh, of how developers 15 years ago were naming things is if you have a, a deed, say, Warg Slayer, uh, you'll see that there's a couple of those, right? There's Warg Slayer and Warg Slayer Advanced for Lone Lands and North Downs and Misty Mountains and Angmar and Arakian and Dunland, which is... Um, Frustrating from a <laughs> from a desire to ambigu or disambiguate those uh, just off off the cuff. So if I were to come in here and say Warg Slayer, the approach is basically I don't know which one of those you just did. You tell me, right? Like because we don't have the ability to go into the game and query against the whole list of deeds to say what was that, uh, and because we don't have that ability, that's just a thing that we can't know. We can't know which Warg Slayer it is. We can make guesses. Certainly, if I were to say I'm in the Lone Lands, okay, I'm in the Lone Lands and I complete that, um, we can know, okay, if you're in the Lone Lands, you are not physically connected to any of these other places, uh, or not physically adjacent, therefore it must have been that one. So we, we can make educated guesses. Anyway, um, okay, Buddha asked, uh, and Thurlor has already answered, but I'll, I'll repeat, um, I played this game for like 14 years, uh, who are you and do you work for SSG? I am B4 or Cube or um, uh, other monikers as well. Uh, I do not work for SSG. I am just a fan of Lord of the Rings Online and a fan of writing plugins. And I was looking for a way to kind of force myself to make a little bit of progress on plugins each week and maybe share some of uh, my enthusiasm for plugins with other people. And some of you uh, seem to find this worth coming back for. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, that being said, if you do ever need SSG assistance, uh, I am not the person. I have no insider knowledge. Uh, I just have theories about how things work uh, based on what I see from doing plugins or what I do from watching uh, Court of the Rings on Fridays or, or watching forum engagement, that kind of thing. Cool. And yeah, thanks for jumping in there with that third lore. While I was going on a tangent with D Tracker, um, that's, that's neither here nor there. All right, unload that sucker. Okay, so we can see um, in chat that Rosenblum has done lots of things. So we got the, 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 nope, not you. We got the basic process that we're looking for. We are able to monitor all of chat uh, by saying, hey, turbine, well, SSG, game, when you have a chat message, call this function. This function then says, I'm only looking for a channel called death, which is uh, really mapped into the in-game combat events channel. In fact, I should comment that. Only process. Oh, I mean, the function does that. Note, combat events is called death in the enumeration. Okay, a note for future me, or whoever else comes along and makes a patch. So. Once we know it is just the, t the, the channel that we're looking for, we go ahead and uh, handle that here. And then we go through and check it for uh, specific messages. And if we find one, we go ahead and handle that in some way. Awesome. That's actually a lot of progress. So if we come back to our to-do, what do we have? Monitor combat event channel for crowd control baked messages. We did it. Parse them based on collected patterns. Done. Uh, and here are those sample messages. In fact, let's move those up and indent them to show that they're done. Okay. So, a couple of other things. Now, in the long run, it was um, we. Uh, I was musing with someone, and we thought a UI to display this kind of stuff after a combat is done or maybe even optionally during the combat, uh, would be great. For now, if we get to this point in chat.lua, we can run with it. We have the break message, we know who did it, 
to what, uh, what, what type of a crowd control it was, we can run with that. Um, putting it into GUI is, I don't want to say it's easy, but it is straightforward. Uh, so that's probably not a today thing. We only have half an hour left. But what are some other things that we're interested in? Notifications today. Output to standard the three pieces. Who broke which crowd control on what? We did it. Done. Later, a UI. That's a, that is definitely a later. Okay. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, remind the user to turn on the display, combat state, break notices, and chat window. Oh, and uh, debug buttons to trigger or debug options to trigger different types of messages. <coughs> and what I see for that is kind of a constructed thing where you can say, is it me or is it someone else? Um, and then which of the uh, types that we're monitoring for is it? And then the name of the thing that, that is happening. Like you, you could construct that all, then hit a button and then fire it off. And the way that would work is that we'll construct that message from the debug options and then just call this function, handle combat event chat, and then it will act as if we had seen that in the actual chat. So it'll sidestep the need to go out and find these orcs all over the place, although here's one. Neat. Fun, okay. Okay, so the debug option sounds a little bit more complicated than what I need right now. Um, but the reminder for the user, what would that look like? Well, eventually we are going to have some sort of settings to control the UI, possibly to control um, uh, more fine-grained things, but definitely just like, where is the UI on the screen? So we're going to have some sort of a save file. But... In the meantime, that save file uh, will also be where we're going to store have we pestered the user and reminded them that they need to turn this option on, the, the one in the combat. Break. So we're going to need save settings for this, uh, even though we don't have a window yet. So what does that look like? Once again, I'm going to pull up an existing working version, hopefully go a little bit slower, um, so that we don't uh, lose anyone watching. But a common approach is to open the wrong file, settings, no, of course, globals. This is actually more, more than I want. I want a little bit easier. So uh, the opaque quest tracker, nice and streamlined. We're going to come on in here, settings, excellent. So a common way to uh, handle settings is to have two table structures. The first is, what if they don't have a save file? This is the first time they've loaded up. Um, we, we need some basic uh, stuff so that the window doesn't appear off screen, that nothing is weird. So you have a default table, and then your actual settings table is gonna be populated from a load function. The load function will try to load from a file and if so, it'll go ahead and fix any um, uh, floating point numbers. And let's see. If we don't find a save file, then we're just going to go ahead and use that default settings instead. Those are some basic, uh, basic ways to do uh, settings. There's more complicated ones where you might have a default and you'll overload with whatever is in the file instead of just all or nothing from the file. But uh, I think that's an overkill for a plugin like this. So in our settings.lua, we might have things like default settings. I'm just going to copy paste because apparently I'm going to type random lowercase letter letters and that is going to get me into trouble. Uh, and then we'll also have, and you know, Thriller probably would appreciate the streamlining of this name. I would almost want to go back and call that current settings or something, but settings is nice and straightforward. 
if, if I were being nicer to someone reading it instead of nicer to someone typing it, uh, that would be the kind of change I would do. Because this is the settings for the current uh, load of the plugin. Uh, but next time you unload and load it back up, uh, they could be different. OK, so that is the settings. And we'll want to put any uh, setting related functions in this file. But in the meantime, we have uh, the ability to define substructures, which can be very helpful for organizing things, uh, especially in larger uh, windowed uh, plugins. Uh, DTrigger is an example where you have the main window, you have the completion window, and you have that little button, and they each have their own section in the save file. Theralo says, why did you name settings in all caps? Um, in this case, it just, um, I was heavily adapting the HitBuild uh, Builder plugin, HitBuild Assistant by Galahad. And I, I, would, I would guess almost 100% certainly that's how Galahad had done it. And I said, that's fine. Don't need to uh, muck with that. There are other things I need to change more. That being said, mentally, I find it useful asterisk to differentiate global variables from uh, more local variables and cases is um, is one way to do that. If you see something like this, if all of your global variables are all caps, you know you're dealing with a global variable. If you use camel case for local variables, then it's very easy even without a full-blown IDE, integrated development environment like Visual Studio, you still have a, a, that visual way of telling is this global or local scope. Um, so that's a convention that predates modern um, uh, in development environments for professional coding, but it's still very much uh, plausibly useful for if you're just doing it in something like Sublime Text. That being said, if I hover over Sublime Text, does it like tell me things? Hey, tell me more. Apparently not. Sometimes it does, like functions. There we go. Yeah. Thorlor is pointing out in chat, uh, for default settings, I see the influence of the C preprocessor, but not for variables. Uh, the initial cap uh, can distinguish global and local. Absolutely. There are numerous ways of doing this. The important is consistency. If you run into a plugin, um, and mine might be some of them, if you run into a plugin where half the time global variables are all caps and half the times they're not, and sometimes they use underbars and sometimes they don't, and uh, cam camel case or all lowercase, uh, that is much more confusing than a specific style, even if it's quote unquote wrong, that is used consistently. So this is not a right or wrong, it's just personal preference. Uh, and right now, because I am kind of lifting this code out of a different plugin that is doing it that way, I'm just gonna follow along for right now. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you, you kind of fix in a weekend where you just go uh, find all the uses and you, you, you refix them, um, you, know, you, you change them up uh, and just commit that. The other says in C, uh, I only use all caps for macros. Yeah, that's uh, definitely a strong convention from the C world. Uh, to my knowledge, Lua doesn't have anything like macros, but I have found global variables in my life to be kind of a dangerous thing to uh, be aware of that you're using, or at least try to be aware of it. And so, uh, you know, sliding that convention over for this other thing that could really mess you up because it's a global state and any part of your plugin can be me messing with it and yeah, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, I am off the rails here. So we have a default settings, and we, we want to track uh, if we have shown a prompt to the user. Uh, now, if we're doing a nested structure like this, we have the uh, question of, are we going to put it within something like that? Like options equals, um, or is it just gonna be standalone? Uh, I don't know. I'll put it in options for right now. Have prompted user. Um, that's kind of vague. Have we reminded the user to turn on combat break messages? <laughs> Pestered. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it might feel like pestering. If you use this on 20 different characters across four different servers, you would see this for each one of them. 
But at the same time, that setting can be different for each one of them. So at a certain point, it's kind of like, yeah, this is really important. Otherwise, the plugin does nothing. Like you can activate it and we will just slow your computer down by a few microseconds every, every frame. And that just, yeah. All right, so um, I've uh, inadvertently declared that as a table. We're gonna just call it false. And that's the default setting. So if they have no save file, then we haven't prompted them by default. All right, so we are going to want some functions. Function load settings, function save settings. And these functions we want to call from something. Now, there are a lot of complicated things over here. All right. So, um, when a plugin is loading, we have access to a special uh, plugin variable. I don't know if that's gonna come into play here, but it just flew into my head. Let's go ahead and look and see where load settings is used. Awesome. Right here at the top of main, we go ahead and try to load our settings. That sounds great. Let's do it. That means we're going to need the settings available here in main. And in main, we can go ahead and load settings. Now we can even do that before we initiate chat monitoring. Uh, settings is great because if there's any customization over things like chat monitoring, we're taken care of. Okay. We have a call to load settings. We can even say info settings loaded. Now that's kind of generic. It might be nicer to uh, go ahead and say what, what, what is the name of the plugin? Thurlor points out, if you're gonna restrict yourself to letters and underscores for key names, you don't need the uh, bracket quote. Um, yes, I, sus uh, I believe that is true. That's uh, another example of where my, my brace based language, um, uh, knowledge is letting me down because absolutely, uh, this seems like a thing you can do. I guess my inherent problem is I'm not always com comfortable that I'm going to only have, uh, letters and under, uh, underscores. And so I think it would annoy me more if I came back and, and had like more options here or something and I had options equals this, like changing up the style midstream annoys me. And so I think right now uh, I'll default to using the quotes. Hey, you know what? I, I like it. Let's, let's remind my uh, future me that this is even possible and do it uh, since uh, we're so, uh, so new into this plugin. Awesome. If I, if I regret the decision later, I'll just uh, go and fix that. Actually, I guess the real question is, how much would it mess us up if there were spaces or other fancy characters in there in the save file? I assume Lou would be able to take care of that. All right. So we have, excuse me. We have a load settings. Something that I like to do is at least include the name of the, of the plugin. So um, let's see, what are we calling this thing? Crowd control broke settings loaded. Great. Same thing with the save settings. Now, some plugins will save settings uh, midstream, as it were, periodically as you are playing. A lot of plugins will just try to save the settings when the plugin is unloaded, which is usually when you are logging out. The only trouble with that is um, if the game client crashes for any reason, or if you were to hit that little X in the window button and not go through the proper logout, uh, that sort of thing, then your plugin might not be able to save. Definitely not in the case of crash, maybe not in some other exit um, scenarios. So if you have important stuff, it might be worth doing those periodic saves or saving after that important thing has changed uh, during the life cycle of your plugin. In this case, we're only talking about like window positions and did we prompt, prompt the user and that kind of thing. It's just not gonna change often enough. We can just um, save when we unload. But that means we can take advantage of the turbine.plugin.unload 
where we say, hey, please tell us when the plugin's getting unloaded. Awesome. Let's do it. So, Rocky says, was there an update for the Lua? The method get target is no longer available. To my knowledge, um, there has not been an internal update of the Lua engine or an external update of the API in the recent time frame of the say the last six months. Um, so for example, if I were to let me go ahead and restore my minstrel buffs here. So plug it along. Plugins. I, I go ahead and pull out uh, the plugins that I'm not actively actively working on. <laughs> I just pull them out uh, while I'm doing a stream like this. But we'll go ahead and put minstrel buffs back in. And awesome, thank you. Go away now. Um, so if I come on into Plugin Manager and do a refresh here, we get Mr. Buff. Let's go ahead and load that. And we want to make sure that we are using the Soliloquy Jacker. All right. So we have Mr. Buffs, the Soliloquy Tracker. Awesome. Now I just need access to the Soliloquy Spirit and we'll be all good. Awesome. So let's go ahead and... All right. It would appear that this is working. Now the real question is, did I end up using git target or not? Maybe this is a completely uh, wrong uh, way of testing that. Let's see, let's go so we'll good track of window. Okay, yep, we're definitely using um, local player git target in that case. Oh yes, of course, um, to know when to border the window like that. So if I go ahead and do a soliloquy spirit here on, I would of course have to not be in red line. Great. So if I do is, ah, she's running away. If I do a soliloquy spirit here on Rosenblum, cool. So we can see that the get target is correctly returning the name of our target, and that's allowing us to know which of those boxes to border. Cool. All right, looks like Rocky tried to share a link. Sorry about that, Rocky. I don't actually know how to give you permission, but I don't see the link in my... Uh, chatty control. I wonder if I can just pop over to the actual Twitch page without uh, really breaking my computer. Show me chat. I'm not seeing a link there either. Oh, it is right. I see. I see. I see. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for bringing that up. So. The API documentation, one of the two big differences between the, the downloadable one here that we saw, official update 25 documentation, and the Lotro wiki, is the Lotro wiki has kind of filled in some of the things that are known to be present but not official. So for instance, if we were to come into the uh, turbine.ui and the control, uh, we can see get background, get stretch mode is displayed, set stretch mode. These are all in red, not because they don't exist, but because they do exist, but are not part of the official documentation. So it's kind of the opposite, right? Um, where um, the community knows for whatever reason, maybe it was talked about on the forums, maybe just they discovered it, that this was a thing that was doable. Set stretch mode. Set stretch mode is incredibly useful, but not officially documented, probably because it's so wacky, right? It's got like 17 edge cases. I don't know. Um, so that red is a sign that you're getting something above and beyond what is over here in the downloadable documentation. So if I come over here to control, uh, if I say stretch, there is no stretch mode documented in this downloadable version. And that's exactly why 
I keep a link to both the downloaded API documentation and the wiki documentation right here in my development uh, uh, bookmark tab because the, uh, the downloadable one is great. I actually, I, I prefer it. Um, the, the style that's presenting the information, the tree view on the left, like it really works with my way of reading documentation. But every once in a while, there's, there's a function or an enumeration that's not fully defined here, but is over on the wiki. So for, for me, they very much complement each other. Uh, and general usability, I just don't like the, 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 the wiki layout version of that information as much as the downloaded one. Yeah, um, awesome. Thriller says, when a page doesn't exist, all links are read. Awesome, you're invited to create that page on the wiki after figuring out how it works. Yeah, that's, I actually find it useful that it is read because it tells me that it's, you know, uh, not not uh, documented but is available. So I, I actually don't mind that those pages don't exist. I wish there was a way to define the pages instead of just putting people at Garen's uh, excellent uh, development thread. Define the pages but keep this link a different color to, to highlight that this is uh, non-official documentation or something. Yeah, um, Thurlow says all those functions have been discussed in public forums um, and points out this is a very excellent thread by Garen called uh, Writing uh, Lotro Plugins for Noobs. Uh, so there's an excellent resource, among other things, if I search for a stretch, I get a whole bunch of information on it. This is exactly the documentation you might expect to be in the official one if it were referenced at all. Uh, we, we could be so lucky. So, Rocky, no worries. Thanks for asking. Uh, it's it's good to know where people are coming from when they're having a, a, a problem like, oh, I see that as red. That that might mean X. And it's, it's good to know that that's, a, that's a, a place that you can kind of derail someone. So thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Okay, awesome. So, uh, that being said, I don't really need to be in healing line, so I'm gonna change back before I try to do something uh, aggressive. Great. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unload the Minstrel Buff plugin. Great. Okay, so as I was saying, your plugin might want to save periodically or under certain conditions, but a lot of times we just want to save off our current state when we are unloaded and that is good enough for 99% of cases. All right? oh, they moved the button a little bit. Oh, they asked for blue instead of red. That's great. Uh, I did implement a periodic save in Deed Tracker because I was noticing that it's very possible to go and complete dozens of deeds in a day or manually check off hundreds of deeds and then something goes wrong and the client crashes or uh, there's a problem with the save file or whatever. And just all that work was lost. And this was before there was an import capability. So if, you're, if your character had completed stuff, you had to manually go and synchronize the two. Uh, and at the time it was like, oh, that's terrible. We can't have a data loss of that scope. So I implemented a thing where when you complete a deed, it waits like 10 seconds and it says, okay, good enough, and writes out the file. Um, that's... That's overkill for a plugin like this. So we're going to look at this register for unload. Awesome, that's happening in the main. Right after we load settings, we have a register for unload. And for us, that means uh, we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, um, game, when you are unloading me, go ahead and, and do this thing. In this case, uh, this is an inline function. Yes. Uh, so we can go ahead and just define that here. Function, uh, register for unload. And when we do that, we can do turbine.plugin.unload equals function this is an anonymous function because we're just going to do the two things. Thurlor in chat mentions my plugins, the big ones. I'm thinking reminders probably. Automatically uh, create backups for the last seven days for so when your settings file gets corrupted inevitably you don't lose everything. That is 
fair. Um, the D-Tracker plugin uh, does not do an efficient file for uh, saving. So if I were to come into uh, plugin data, and let's just say it's for Treebeard, and that's for Affido. Yeah, here's an example of travel window, back of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, reminders is probably stored for all characters. So let's see. Oh no, it must be higher level than that. All servers. Reminders and reminders back of one, two, three, five, six, seven. Did you share your code with um, what's his name? Yas? Because that is a very similar uh, system. <laughs> Maybe he was inspired by you. Or they, maybe they were inspired by you. Okay, so um, D-Tracker doesn't go quite to that excess because of course I don't write corrupted save files. <laughs> no. Um, uh, what D-Tracker does is writes out backup files if we're about to do something like upgrading from version one save format to version two or uh, some other more complicated thing. Uh, like if you're about to do an import from the, the plugin com uh, companion uh, it'll write out a, a backup of your save file before you do that, just in case. Because at the time, it was like, eh, this seems kind of unstable. Uh, but it doesn't actually uh, do what you're talking about. And on the one hand, it'd be kind of nice if it did. But on the other hand, because we do have the import capability from the plugin companion, it's like, uh, it's, it's your state is pretty fully restorable. The only thing you lose are the dates of deed completion. And we don't actually do anything with that right now. Everyone says, as far as I can tell, occasional save file corruption is unavoidable. You can mitigate it by not saving as often, but not entirely eliminate it. That's interesting. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, and all those things. I haven't seen that type of save file corruption happen for Deed Tracker, but I also don't save um, decimal numbers, I don't think. Uh, let me actually uh, pop that open. Now you've got me curious. Affidale. Um, oh, that's actually all characters, and then say Affidel. So there are no decimal numbers in here. It's all numbers or uh, booleans or uh, strings. And I feel like that's helpful because the biggest source of save file corruptions that I see are when I'm switching client language from English to not English, um, German or French specifically. Uh, and then any decimal numbers that are not um, properly taken care of both with the vendor patch and the Euro normalized technique uh, will not make a full uh, transition, and that definitely is a problem. Interesting. The says the usual way it gets corrupted is just save an empty file, but I've also seen it truncated halfway through. I have not seen that, which I guess makes me uh, especially lucky. Might be worth uh, in investing in some sort of backup. So. Uh, what do I do when I have an idea like that? I come to D-Tracker to do, think about saving periodic backups, similar to travel window two or reminders. Great, and now I can just forget about it. It's on my uh, eventually might get to it list. All right, um, neat, neat, neat. So we have a register for unload. That is to say, please do this text, or th this code here, this block, when the plugin is getting unloaded. First thing we can do is do a save settings. And the second thing is a nice little, hey, we've unloaded. Now in this case, there's a language string saying we've unloaded. That's a little overkill, or is it? Let's take a look. Okay. Plugin name, excellent. Plugin version, plugin descriptions. These are uh, nice things to have anyway. Let's go ahead and throw them in there. So let's go ahead and have plugin name, plugin version, plugin description. But more specifically, um, our unloaded string can be localized. Hmm. Sorry, just uh, thinking. Let's see, status, that sounds great. In fact, I'm gonna lift that whole section, loaded and unloaded. Which means actually these should be defined over here. And notice I broke my own rule here. Those are globally uh, variables. 
uh, but they are not all caps. Um, so I am inconsistent. All right, loaded. We have loaded. We have plugin description. Awesome. We have unloaded or using the plugin name. Cool. We have those. <laughs> Don't forget to credit yourself for that. Uh, I am confident that the, the chain of lifting has extended past me. Okay, so assuming I don't have any major um, syntax errors there, unload, reload, great. But we can see, crowd control broke, settings loaded, awesome, that's the starting point. Where did we use the loaded string in this other function that we're cribbing off of? Awesome, at the end of our main function, love it. Let's consider doing the same thing here. Now, we're using strings. We're going to go ahead and continue with our weirdness of calling out the files that we use where we use them. Uh, so chat, settings, strings. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and have a loaded message. And in the settings, we can go ahead and have an unloaded message. So let's go ahead and find the other use here. And the same thing. Now, We've actually got a helper function here, info, we can go ahead and make use of. And that's just nice because it will color it um, whatever our info messages uh, are colored as. All right. So I'm already regretting the experiment of uh, scattering my import station uh, statements all over. So we'll see. All right, crowd control broke, settings loaded, loaded, crowd control broke, sweet. Now those are probably redundant ones, but we also have set, um, crowd control broke unloaded, awesome. So those messages are coming through loud and clear, excellent. So we're not actually doing anything in our load and save settings yet. We're kind of building up to it. Um, now, do we need a message that's saying settings are saved and loaded? I think actually we don't. I want to change that to debug statements. We're not doing anything so complicated that we need to tell people every time we do it. But we'll keep the uh, loading and unloading messages. OK, so what does it look like to save and load? Well, first of all, um, there is a very helpful function for dealing with language uh, conversion stuff, uh, specifically decimal numbers, and that is the Vindar patch file. And if our plugin ventures into the realm of storing decimal numbers in the save file, that is crucial, very important. For strings, for uh, Boolean values, uh, it is less uh, necessary. So we could do without it for right now. But since we know we're going to do window positions and we can either do absolute pixels or we can do percentages, and the percentages, if we do them, are going to be stored as uh, decimal numbers, let's just go ahead and pull that in right now. We did a discussion of Vindar patch and other things uh, just a stream or two ago. Um, so we can always review that for uh, for context. So we have this Vindar patch. Thank you, Vindar. And that replaces the um, general plugin.load function uh, with a better version. And so that is the plugin, plugin methods, and that's the load and unload. So instead of using turbine.plugin.load, uh, we'll use patch data load. And instead of dot save, we'll use patch data save. Now, we have a couple of global settings here. And again, didn't follow that convention at all. Not even uppercase. Uh, maybe I'll fix that here. Um, I was uh, doing a very minimalistic thing on the opaque quest tracker. Uh, so if we come in and go ahead 
All right, we'll go ahead and edit, convert case, uppercase, there we go. So we have settings data scope and settings file name, default settings data scope, default file name. This is, I would say, overkill, uh, but I think it's kind of helpful to have a sense of what are these things. Um, oh, I remember why I did that. Uh, Opaque quit. Quest Tracker has a specific capability where you can copy the settings for the current plugin and use them uh, for all of your characters. Uh, assuming your Quest Tracker is always in the same location and you use the same UI layout, you don't need to reposition it for every character. You just do it once, press a button, and that does it for all the characters. So I think that was solving a problem we don't have here. Neat. That being said, we're going to do a uh, load. And to do that, we're going to do uh, local load settings equals patch data load. And we're going to pass two things. This mimics, though, the signature of load. Well, that is hilarious. Oh, sorry. I am... In the wrong place. I should have been saying plugin data dot load plugin data dot save. Um, so this mimics the same signature. So when we're doing a load, uh, we have the scope and the key. Uh, in our cases, the scope and the key. Um, the scope is um, part of the data scope enumeration. So if we come in in here to data scope, it's going to be account or server or character. Uh, and in this case, we want it to be character. This is um, going to be things like, where is the window positioned? Have we nagged you? That kind of thing. So that's easy enough. Turbine dot data scope dot character. Great. And then the second thing is what they call the key, which is to say, what is the name of the file? In this one, we uh, just call it opaque quest tracker settings. Awesome. And calling it out as a uh, variable just meant that we could use that variable in multiple places and not worry about mistyping and suddenly you're loading a different file than you're saving. Uh, this is, again is a pretty uh, minimalistic plugin here. So we'll just go ahead and say, oh, what did we call this thing again? Crowd control broke settings. Super easy. There is a third uh, parameter to that function uh, called the data load event handler. If you are calling this function well during the plug up, uh, plugin initialization or shutdown, that is not needed, probably ignored. If you're calling this during your normal plugin loading, it is required because in general, if you're trying to load or save data while your plugin is running, not during startup or shutdown, uh, there is a delay, uh, and I've seen that delay be uh, an intentional 10 second delay between the issue and the response. So you call load, and then this function is called when the load is completed, and then you can do something with that. So um, for bigger complicated plugins like DTracker, I've had to balance the idea of, oh, it'd be cool not to bother loading anyone else's data until I need it, but it'd be kind of annoying if someone goes to change to another character and there's, there's just a 10 second hourglass wait uh, while we load that stuff up. Um, so I don't have a good a solution for that, but it's, uh, it's one of those thoughts I have is like, I don't need that data, but when I do need it, I can't get it in a timely manner. So uh, anyway, so that's it. We are loading from a scope. And this scope maps directly to your file structure. So underneath plugin data, you have accounts, and then you have servers, or all server, and then you have characters, or all characters, um, and underneath that, you have the actual files. So if you are doing account-wide, you'll be all servers. If you're doing it server-wide, it'll be all characters, and if you're doing it for a specific character, then it'll be in that named directory. And so you cannot save outside of those uh, specific paths. And then you just determine the file name there. Now, this is an important thing. Uh, Lotro does not care or uh, manage the name of your 
uh, files. So a badly behaved plugin could uh, read or write from someone else's save files. Now, reading's not badly behaved necessarily, just reading it in, that could be useful. But writing to another plugin save files is very risky. Even if you perfectly match their format today, tomorrow their format could change and that could be bad. Or you could just be like, I will write gibberish here. So uh, there is no control over what you can write, which is both a blessing and a curse. It's a double-edged sword. So just be aware. Uh, this is why a lot of plugin authors will go ahead and prefix the name of their plugin and then describe what it, whatever it is, settings or data or something. Um, because that way, the only time someone's going to collide with that is if they did it intentionally, right? There's, if you saved your file as settings, yeah, someone eventually is going to come along and save their file as settings, and that's a problem. But crowd control broke settings? I'm the only one who's writing to that intentionally, uh, so we're good there. All right, so there's other stuff to do here. Uh, finish loading. Uh, the settings. In save settings, uh, it's a lot more straightforward. All we're doing is again patch data save, which uses the same interface as plugin data save, which is again a scope, a key, and then the thing that you're saving. And again, a callback if you're doing this live. So, patch data save, same thing, turbine dot data scope dot character and the same name of the file. The only change here is we're also passing that global settings structure. And that's it. So the save is actually very uh, straightforward. Loading can get more complicated as you deal with decimal numbers, as you deal with um, fleshing out defaults, as you deal with, oh, that window is off the screen, let's move it back on. Stuff like that. But saving, saving is usually very straightforward and simple. Okay, so that's done. All right, so in our to do, we did a lot of cool stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the things that we've done from the to do. Okay, so we have settings, finish, uh, load function, see opaque, quest tracker for uh, ideas. And then pop up a window reminding user uh, player to turn on combat break messages. Take screenshot of setting to use in dialog. As I thought I had the other day is I don't think that's anything that stops us from just taking a screenshot and saving it uh, in the TG format and then just loading that as a resource for this window. It's like, this is the thing you need to click. So I'm very tempted to try that out and see how it works and see if it, it turns out as well as it does in my head. So that's the thought I had. So once we've got that, then we can start uh, dealing with a UI where we want to move that window around. Uh, once we're saving and loading settings, then adding more settings to it is very straightforward. Okay, uh, well, I am a little bit over time here, but I'm very pleased with what's happened. In fact, let's go into the readme file. Uh, and then chat messages. <coughs> Enabled for, uh, that was days and fear. Days and fear breaks. Awesome. Like just standing up from absolutely nothing to a plugin that actually does tell us when combat breaks have happened, the who, the what, the, the why, as it were. Uh, awesome, that's great progress. And we're gonna get even more done in the future. So I'm gonna pause, catch up on chat. If there's any, uh, grab another drink. Uh, so if you've got any last minute thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and uh, put them into the chat there. And in the meantime, what's going on in Lothlorien? All right, I feel like I haven't been very aggressive this, uh, this stream. So I'll go ahead and hit this orc with a frying pan. Fantastic.
Hmm. Thorlor says, was there a lot of wind damage from the winter storm there? In the Netherlands as a whole, yes. In fact, um, the Netherlands, as you may know, has a very extensive public transit uh, system, rail and trolley and buses and even metros in Amsterdam and Rotterdam. Uh, and those shut down at 2 p.m. the day of the big E storm. I, I keep forgetting the names, Eunice or um, something. Um, that day, yeah, uh, messages went out. Transit's just shutting down at 2 o'clock. Please stay indoors. Uh, I think four people across the Netherlands died because of things like trees falling on them. I don't know the stories behind them. They may have had legitimate reasons to be outside, but still very sad. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we have neighbors that have fences down. We have There's a tree down over on the berm over there, stuff like that. Uh, fortunately, we, we got away with um, just a, a leak of some water through a, a, a weak spot in a flat roof that we have. Uh, and that, that had happened before the storm as well. So it was just, Hey, it's back. So we, we put out a call to a roof type person to come, uh, to fix that, but I'm sure they're very busy. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it, it was very noticeable, right? Like you're just sitting there and the wind is howling and howling and howling. Uh, we actually are very fortunate to have, um, a feature called Rolauken. Um, let's see. And there are metal shutters on the outside of the uh, glass that come down. And it's not like a home defense thing. I, I don't think it'd stand up against zombies. Uh, but it's very good at cutting out light. Uh, so if I'm taking an afternoon nap, I just slide that thing down in the bedroom. It's almost totally dark. It's great. Uh, curtains do not, uh, you know, the light never hits. And then in the summer, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, we just moved here in August, so we didn't get a full summer. But in the summer, you can slide those down, and the sun never actually gets to the glass, so it can't get beyond the glass, so it can't turn into, um, you know, uh, whatever the short or long wave radiation that doesn't go back out through the glass. Uh, so being able to go up to our first floor above us um, and then just, like, bring all the shutters down all around the house in defensive formation is like, okay, I'm not worried about a window breaking or a tree limb coming smashing through or something, right? Like, this is this is really nice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Rolaukan definitely made me feel a little bit more comfortable about the, the gale winds coming through. Um, but we're, I don't know, 100 kilometers away from the, the western coast of the Netherlands, and they got a much worse battering than we did. So uh, we're, we're very fortunately located. And it was definitely with intent that we chose a place eight meters above sea level to live in the Netherlands. Like, we definitely had options. We were in a fortunate p place to, like, pick where we wanted to try to um, uh, settle in in the Netherlands. And it's like, you know what? Above sea level sounds great. You know, that thing, that thing keeps changing. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, get ahead of the curve there. Mm, Little Red Hat has more information. Yeah. Uh, most of our neighborhood has just our trash can sitting out um, near, the, near the road, so it's easy to, uh, to just push it out to the curb uh, on pickup days. Yeah. And just put those into the storage unit and not have to worry about chasing trash down the street. That's great. Um, yeah, 70 plus kilometer per hour winds uh, even here, uh, this far away from the coast. And we, yeah, it was just like... Not quite shaking the building, but it was just constant back and forth. So it was exciting. It was exciting, but I'm, I'm glad that that was all it was. Okay, well, thanks for asking. Yeah, um, fortunately, we're all safe and happy and, and sound here. But, uh, you know, as time goes on and as those types of storms get more common, it's going to be... Oh, awesome. Uh, thank you for shutting that out. Um, yeah, it, those types of things are going to get more common, it seems. And so it'll be nice to like reinforce the roof and, and that kind of thing. Baz, yes. Um, I've had a, a, a plugin server for Cube plugins specifically, but uh, for a little while uh, now. And, you know, I, someone was reaching out to me the other day and it's like, is there a developer's Discord server? And I was like, not really that, that I know of. Maybe, maybe the cool kids have their own, but. Um, not really that I know of, like, the, here's a place people talk, some people chat over here on the Cube plugin server, but it made me think, like, maybe there's a use for just a, 
uh, Lotro plugin development Discord server, or maybe Lua plugin development with a Lotro specific uh, subsection, something like that. Like it wouldn't be an all hours of the day chatter type, th type thing, but it might be a centralized place that is different from the forums for people to come and, and get a little bit more um, live feeling chat. Like chatting on the forums feels like a challenge compared to chatting in Discord. Um, not even the whole, oh, someone's typing now. Oh, good, I'll sit here instead of going off to the kitchen and doing something. But but just the, the, the ebb and flow of it feels a lot more natural than trying to have a conversation on the forums. So the forums is great for long posts, like like that Garen thread where it's like, hey, cool, we've got 10,000 words here. Um, um, so that's... Yeah, the forums are great for long posts, but it feels like you lose some of that impromptu, let's have a little conversation, oh, I'm having troubles with this, does anyone have any ideas kind of thing that you could get from a, a Discord-like environment. So I guess I'd put that out there to other people. Would, is that of interest? Or if it's already out there and everyone else has already been invited, send a link to Baz. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, in the meantime, feel free to jump onto the Cube Plugins server. There's a plugin development channel in there. Uh, so if you have questions, concerns, comments, whatever, you can throw them in there. It doesn't have to be cube plugins related. I, I'm not picky. But it feels like if there is going to be like a Lotro Lua developers server, it shouldn't necessarily just be an outgrowth of my own uh, little server. Maybe? <laughs> Baz says, it's probably a much better way to spread information about plugins. Currently it's so hidden. That's my, that's my only, that, that's a down thing. Uh, oh, and, there is a link here on screen. If you don't want to type that in, I can. Oh, that might be a shorter term link, but if it works, it works. Awesome. Um, there are loads of things that should be an outgrowth of my server. That's fine with me. I could always rename it or something. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's the, the one concern I have is Discord servers feel very impermanent compared to Lotro forms. Now, Lotro site migrations and Lotro forums have their issues, but I think the intent for Standing Stone Games when they bring out a new forum is to just archive the old forum and it's still there in, in some sort of accessible place. That'll, that would be a shame to lose over a decade of, of historical artifacts there. And that's sort of a concern I have. If there is useful discussion in a Discord server, that's where it goes to die in a way, right? Like you can search for it, but if that Discord server goes away or if you just don't know it's there, um, searching back through old conversations in Discord feels like a chore, right? That's where the forums kind of shine. Live discussion and having a chat back and forth is where Discord seems really great. But once you have that consensus of, oh, this is really cool, if you don't kind of throw it out in the forums or at least into a, a working plugin, it's like it never happened almost. I don't know. So it feels like a little bit more community engagement, a little bit less documentation. Uh, so I, ha I, have, I have thoughts on the subject. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I'd be happy to add a couple of extra um, channels to the Discord server for general stuff um, or rebrand in some way. But right now, yeah, if you if you come into that Discord server, it says cube plugins. Um, don't feel shy about going off topic. It's fine. Okay, Baz says the current forum is horrible to use, so pretty much anything is better. Okay, fair enough. I post on there like once every two months. I posted a recent one. I, I don't know if the thread was already dead or not, but I, I posted an idea on uh, the, the deed log. Deeds are a bit of a passion of mine, as you may uh, know. Um, and so one of the things that is true about the deed log is if you hover over, oh, that's not a good example. Um, let's see, how about the Shire? Uh, if you hover over a deed on the left, you will get lore about that deed. Farmer represents the heart of the Shire and farm can be found throughout. That's cool. Also, if you hover over each of the individual items from a deed, you get more lore. Now, in some expansions, it feels like they were kind of phoning it in or they were rushed and the lore is not very lorey. But in this case, find Ben Farm Long. It's a land owned by Farmer Maggot, one of the most respected farmers in the Marish. That's awesome. I wish this was more discoverable. I wish this was there was some sort of an affordance that says, hey, if you put your mouse cursor here, you'll see some cool text. Uh, but as it is, I do not know how many people I've chatted with that are like, you can do what now? Oh, that, how long has that been in there? Like since day one, right? Like it's been there for 15 years. Um, and so 
I feel like you could have a, a redesign of that, that that kind of emphasized, hey, there's something here if you want it. You might not, right? Like, you might not want it, but if you do want it. Uh, and I, I posted a, a mock-up screenshot of that. And, uh, no one actually uh, commented on it, and that's totally fine. The thread may have been kind of dead at that point anyway. Uh, but it was just like, a, yeah, why not throw that out there? Let's see. Deed. Oh, that was by Thorvor, not Thorlor. Uh, so it was one of those things where like, hey, um, Deed Tracker will will give you the lore if you want it. it like, I don't hide that. I love the, I love the lore. I want to I want to call it out. But then I, I had fun making a little mock-up. But what it, what would it look like if you wanted to actually show people? Hey, if you click a thing, you'll get more information. I mean, the mock-up's terrible, but it was a fun little exercise of how would you do that? How would you show there is more to see here? Without, I mean, some lore is really extensive, like three paragraphs of text. So you wouldn't necessarily want it to just show here. It would dominate the screen. Anyway, I am off topic. So, um, yeah, feel free. There's a link to the Cube Discord server on screen right now. I could probably find a way to copy paste that into chat. A, a little bit through a link in there. I The whole Discord server links thing um, is... is a thing I don't really understand, like uh, how it works and when links go bad and how links go bad. Uh, so just in case that one doesn't work, um, other Discord is server link. Feel free to come join us and we'll chat about um, plugin stuff and we'll adapt it as as is useful. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for that. Oh, Lisa says thanks as well. You're welcome. I hope this was at all useful, but do go check out those first four uh, stream specifically just to get um, uh, a, a jump start into plugin development. Awesome. Pass says they will. Neat. See you there. Um, I don't think I missed any other messages. If I did, I'm sorry. Uh, things scrolled by a little bit with the talking of the weather, as one does. Neat, 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 neat. Okay, I think I'm pretty much caught up. Thriller says thanks. You are very welcome. You have a good week as well. Uh, I will be back next. <laughs> You're kidding me. You're hearing more wind. I hope that's just the neighbors dragging furniture. Um, yeah, I'll be back next Tuesday. Probably making more progress on the crowd control broke, but really I was very happy to just have a proof of concept uh, come up, come about in about two hours. That, that was lovely. Um, so it'll be this, it'll be minstrel buffs, or if someone else messages me, is, me and says, hey, is this possible? I might get distracted by a new shiny. We'll see. So I will see you all uh, next week on that one. So let's see. Anything else in my notes? Oh, yes. Um, it is the last Tuesday of uh, the month again. So Shoreless Skies is doing another Beneath Your Feet at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And Shoreless is going to the Vales. I assume of Anduin, uh, today. So do check that out if you are in for some uh, casual exploration. And that's it. Uh, that's all we're going to cover today. Wait, I'm doing an outro. <laughs> that's all we're going to cover today. Uh, so thanks so much for joining me on this exploration of Lutra plugins. I do hope to see you again next week. Uh, until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now. <laughs>